Hi, welcome to Food for Life TV. Today we are going to put tea and coffee under the microscope. And a popular question I always get is, what is better, tea, coffee? How much coffee can I drink? For the coffee lovers, I know many are not willing to give up their coffee and that is fine. And so today we're just gonna unpack the benefits of both because actually there are benefits to both tea and coffee. And there are large studies that have been done on both tea and coffee and just some of the health benefits that they provide us. Some researchers have shown for tea, it decreases the risk of depression by 37%, that's huge. And three cups of tea per day reduces the risk of stroke by 21%. And then there's further studies, and these are large meta-analysis uh, studies. And meta-analysis studies are basically taking many studies and combining them to come up with their conclusion. So it's not just you know one small study here and there. These are large meta-analysis studies that provide scientific evidence really that show the benefits of tea. And this one that shows that three cups of tea per day improves our entire lifespan by a whopping 24%. So if you're a tea drinker, good on ya. Now, what about coffee? Hey, does anybody want coffee? Who wants coffee? So coffee also has some pretty impressive studies. There was a meta-analysis study that compared no coffee to just an increased coffee consumption, maybe like another cup or two cups, lowered the risk of developing type two diabetes by eight to 30 3% based on one to six cups of coffee, coffee per, per day. The largest risk reduction of health outcomes with three to four cups of coffee a day also provided more health than harm. Also, another large meta-analysis study with coffee and caffeine consumption was associated with a decreased risk of depression when caffeine consumption was between 68 to 509 milligrams per day. So what is the caffeine in our tea and our coffee? So a typical espresso is anywhere between 70 to 80 milligrams of caffeine per day. Tea on average has anywhere between 10 to 60 milligrams. So of course, depending on the types of tea, on how it's brewed, these will all affect the caffeine content of the tea. Of course, matcha being a powder tea leaves and you're taking that straight, that will give you a lot more caffeine. And I think matcha is around 70 milligrams of caffeine. One word about the benefits of tea and coffee. Now this was all, these studies were done on black coffee on straight tea. Usually it's done on black tea or green tea, but that's not to say that white tea, like the red teas, rooibos tea, they also have a lot of great benefits. So the different types of tea and also different types of coffee beans will have different antioxidants that they will give us, different polyphenols and altogether different health benefits. So I encourage you to, I encourage you to just try different types of tea and even coffee beans in your daily regimen. Also, it's really important to state that these studies were not done on frappuccinos and bubble teas because when you're adding dairy, when you're adding milk into your coffee or in your tea, when you're adding sugar, this will inhibit these antioxidants and the health benefits of them. If you really want to have your cup, I encourage you to have it black, have it straight. Maybe if you want, if you need something sweet, have a piece of dark chocolate with it on the side instead of adding sugar and milk into your coffee. To reiterate, caffeine can be good for you. It is not harmful in moderation. So moderate intake of caffeine can be very protective actually for your health. But again, the key is moderation. And other benefits of caffeine include relieving fatigue, as we all know, and many of us use it for. A yawn is a silent scream for coffee but also enhancement of endurance and performance in sports, improving our cognitive function and even protection of our cardiovascular. But there are some negative effects. So when you're taking too much caffeine, I'd say more than you know three, four cups a day, then you really start to get that jittery feeling. There are some people that are not processing caffeine very well. And so even one cup and they can feel anxious and jittery. And it can also increase blood pressure, risk of a heart attack and break 
breakdown of muscle and one big thing is also the, the addiction that you would get to the caffeine. And if we're relying on caffeine to get us through the day, that's also not a good sign because we really want to be making sure that we're getting good sleep. I always, always stress really good sleep, optimal quality sleep and not relying on stimulants to get us through the day. So that is one thing to just be mindful of when you're having your cup. If you do need a caffeine boost and you know, you're know you probably maybe relying on coffee too much, I would actually recommend veering more towards tea because tea actually is more stable in terms of the caffeine effect. It's more sustainable and it doesn't give us that spike. So if you look in the diagram, you can see that coffee gives us that immediate spike immediate spike, but then also we get that coffee crash and then we reach for that second, third, fourth, fifth cup. Uh, whereas with tea, and even particular loose leaf tea, uh, you just have a much more sustained effect in your body and you won't get those crashes. If you are sensitive to caffeine and you want to get the great benefits of the antioxidants of the polyphenols in tea, what you could do is you could brew that first brew. So maybe that first steep, steep it for maybe 60 seconds or even longer if you want, and then dump out that first uh, steep. And then you can drink the second and third steep. So I, this is why I like to use loose leaf teas because I can control the amount of tea leaves that I have in my cup. You can have less tea leaves, you can have more. Of course, the more tea leaves that you put in, the higher the caffeine content, the longer that you steep, the higher the caffeine content. And also water temperature. So the hotter the water, the more caffeine will be extracted. So you can opt for cold teas are great, in the, in the, especially in the summertime. And with a cold water extraction, you're taking out less of the caffeine. Of course, if you are also throwing out your first steep, you will probably get less of the antioxidants and also less flavor, but I'll leave that up to you guys on how to decide. It also depends on how much caffeine you want in your system. So one thing that tea has that coffee doesn't have is amino acid called theanine. Theanine has been used as a relaxant. It's a really great relaxant actually, very powerful relaxant, and it, it can also pass through our blood brain barrier which makes it very effective on calming our brains down. And also it can produce these same alpha brain waves that you would normally produce when you're meditating. And that's why with L-theanine and with tea, it can really give us that calming effect. Another L-theanine uh, benefit is with increasing our dopamine levels, which is our feel-good hormones. And so L-theanine, being in tea, not coffee, is another reason why I like to choose tea over coffee on my day-to-day -day regimen. There are days that you know I'll wake up and I'll really need that extra boost and that, that stronger caffeine, and so then that's where I'll choose coffee. But I like to go with usually a either just a straight up brewed black coffee, or I'll opt for the organic traditions focus fuel blend that has lion's mane in there, which is a beautiful ad adaptogenic herb and mushroom and also has MCT oil to get my brain up and running for the day. Now the the tea that I like to drink is this Thé de la, Thé de la Pagode tea. Sorry if I'm butchering the French for the French people out there, um, but Thé de la Pagode, they use only organic tea leaves and they only pick the bud and the first two tea leaves. And that's because 80% of the antioxidants of the tea plant are in this bud and the first two tea leaves. So really all you would need is just maybe like a teaspoon of the tea leaves and you're already getting a really beautiful, robust um, tea. And tea, like coffee, is also a very, a very, very high high sprayed pesticide crop. And so if you're drinking tea or coffee, you really do want to make sure you're getting organic, that your source is organic, hopefully also fair trade, because when you're brewing your tea, you're not washing your tea leaves. And so when you're putting hot water in there, and same with coffee, then you are basically drinking pesticide soup if it's not organic. <laughs> So organic is very, very important to make sure that, yeah, you're just 
not overloading your system with pesticides and chemicals. Lastly, if you want to go completely caffeine free, but you still want the benefits of tea, this one is my favorite, all time favorite tea, and it is the rooibos tea. It's actually technically not a tea plant, it's from the African shrub the teeth of the Af African shrub, or sorry, the leaves of the African shrub. It has many great properties from helping with insomnia, depression, cholesterol levels. It has a lot of great minerals like zinc and magnesium in there as well. And best of all, it's caffeine free. So safe for breastfeeding women, pregnant women, people who are just very uh, caffeine sensitive. So this is a really great option that you can adopt instead of having green tea or matcha tea, and it tastes fabulous. So this one is a lemon ginger rooibos, but Te de la Pagode also has a vanilla, vanilla and almond rooibos tea. Whether you're choosing tea or coffee, I've given you the studies of the health benefits of both. I personally drink both, although day to day I go with tea just because it has a more sustained effect and has a lot of great polyphenols and the L-theanine in there just to help me get through the day. And of course, all the benefits really are at its best and optimal when you're not adding sugar and milk to your cup. So I hope this was helpful. Remember to subscribe in our channel. The blog is, or the article is also up in our blog and other information are in the show notes. And I'll see you guys next time.